Hey there, welcome to another episode of Inside the Women of Denver. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and we're back with three exciting guests here to talk with you about movie making, the hidden paths to wellness, and my favorite topic, sugary sweets. Up first, a new inspirational sports drama features elite level figure skaters right here in Colorado. We're talking with the woman behind the new film and her inspiration and the process of producing her new movie. I'm here with Madison Bullock, a 24-year-old Colorado native who just created her very first feature film called Ice the Movie. Writing, producing, and starring in her first feature film was a massive accomplishment, so she's here to share with us how she overcame her fear to follow her passion. Madison, I'm so excited to meet you. You're such a star. Oh, thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your movie first off and what it's about. Sure. So the movie, um, it's an inspirational sports drama about two best friend figure skaters that are rivals. They share a mutual coach and they, they live together and train together and compete together over the course of about 10 years mm -hmm. in the film. And it's a, a story that kind of reflects my experiences as an elite athlete. Um, and it's, it's a great story about friendship. So even if you're not a skater, you can still enjoy it. Nice. So what inspired you to do something like this? I mean, it's a big undertaking to make your first feature film. I know you have your own IMDb page, <laughs> you're a big deal, um, but either way, I know it was a lot to do. So what inspired you to do it? And then how did you get started? Sure, so my big inspiration was skating is largely an individual sport. Mm -hmm. And I love these movies that celebrate teamwork and friendship and because being in the film and television industry for a little while, I really realized that movie making is a team sport. And I, I love that because growing up as a skater, it was yeah. so just individual, focused on yourself. I'm like, I am going to combine the two. And yeah. I am going to make a movie that reminds figure skaters that there is a sense of family and community in this, you know, assumed individual sport. Mm -hmm. And there aren't there is not another movie like it out there yeah um, so I, I was like I, I, I got it I got to do this I really felt like it was my my calling or my purpose if you will and it's been a really magical journey so far so I, I think I'm right about it <laughs> yeah it looks like a magical movie so how would you get everything started I mean it's such a lot yeah well the first part was writing the script mm -hmm. and that in itself I think was probably one of the biggest obstacles. I remember staring at like the first 10 pages and being like, is this good? Like, <laughs> like, like where is my grade or where's my confirmation that this is doable and okay? And I remember calling my mom and being like, mom, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you my script. I'm almost finished with it. If it's not good, just tell me and I'm gonna give up. But if you say uh -huh. it's good, I'm going all in and, and I'm making this thing. Oh, that's a lot of pressure on mom. <laughs> But moms always tell you like it is, and, and my mom was my biggest supporter as uh, as a skater, so I mm -hmm. really trusted her. Yeah. And she called me, and, and she said, Madison, this is beautiful. It's it's your voice. You're in these characters. I believe in it. And I was like, all right, I'm finishing it. We're making a movie. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's beautiful to have that kind of support at home. Yeah, I'm very lucky. So what's been the best part of this journey in putting this movie together? Ah. Uh, the best part is is seeing the trust in the vision paying off. Um, I think there's really a lot of power in once you truly believe in something, it, it attracts other people to it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a sort of magnetism to to belief. It's like when my mom believed in me as a skater, I improved. When I believe in my script, it's it's like my little baby. Yeah. And then my director came on board, who was fantastic, and he believes in it and wants it to succeed. So it's belief is it's contagious, and my movie I think is gonna gonna celebrate that. So I love that. So tell me about your favorite character in the film and why. Oh gosh, well my favorite character is probably the one that I play. Um, that is primarily because she is the skater that just goes for it. Like somewhere along the way as, especially as women, I feel like we, we lose that sense of just freedom and, and play and we're like, I should be quiet, I should be reserved, oh, I need yeah. to, to think before I do this. And she's like, 
I want to just do it. You yes. know, she 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 loves skating. She she goes skates. She she gets a, a crush on a guy in the movie, and <laughs> she's just smiley and giggly, and and she just she puts herself out there. And so getting to play that character really reminded me that that's kind of cool. I should put myself out there more. Yeah. So. so what's the biggest lesson you want people to learn from your journey and from the movie itself? From my personal journey, uh, I would love, especially for female filmmakers, to know that if, if you have an idea, it is possible if you trust yourself. Um, and, and learning to trust yourself, it's like any other relationship, you have to earn it. And, and it's not easy, but trust yourself and you will be amazed at what kind of people you will attract to help, you know, bring your vision to life. The, the movie itself, I, I hope that it serves as a piece that inspires people to fall in love with skating. Maybe, maybe just for the time that they watch the movie, maybe they mm -hmm. used to skate and they're like, Oh, I remember how much I love skating yeah. and they go skate again or they take their kids. Just just a chance for even a moment for people to fall in love with the sport that that really changed my life. Beautiful. So how can people catch the movie and when does it come out? Yeah, so right now we're really active on social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Snapgram, whatever it is these <laughs> days. Uh, Hashtag Ice the Movie, and um, right now we're looking at a, a winter release. Um, okay. We want to release with the Olympics. That's Perfect. kind of a theme within the movie. Yeah. So um, we're sort of still in discussion with distributors right now, but it'll probably be a, a new media uh, digital download type platform. Okay. So, yeah. Good. So we'll be looking for it. Awesome. Thanks so much for talking with us. Totally. Thank you. <laughs> I know you're excited to see the movie, but stay with us as we learn about some of the hidden causes behind unresolved health concerns and how to stay energized all year long. I'm talking with Erica Schultz, chief practitioner and founder of Paramount Wellness. She has not one, but two practices in different states and somehow manages to have more energy than most of the people I know. Erica is going to share some of the hidden causes behind unresolved health concerns. There's about five of them and how you can take better control of your health. Yeah. So Erica, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to learn about health today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Crystal. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So five health unresolved health concern reasons for them. Yeah. Um, so what's number one? Number one. Okay, so let's get right into it. So there's, yes. I, I look at five different reasons why people's health is not resolving. And these are reasons that most people aren't familiar with. They're not exactly reasons that you'll be able to come across on the internet, if you will. Ooh, so the first deep. one is has to deal with the nervous system. Okay. So a lot of times when people are getting stopped up in progress uh, with their health concerns, it has something to do with the nervous system. Now the nervous system is king in healing, in terms of healing. So a nervous system that's being stressed out by something or not regulating properly will oftentimes be one of the missing links as to why health is not resolving. So what is the nervous system? Really quick, if yeah, you can. The nervous system has to do with two components. Uh, the, I call it the gas pedal and the brake pedal. Okay. Now the gas pedal is in charge of kind of how you are day to day in, the, in, the, in your life. Um, it's called oftentimes the sympathetic nervous system. Okay. Okay. The brake pedal is what's called the parasympathetic nervous system, which acts more like a governor for healing as well as resting and digesting. So the thing that you want to have in terms of a healthy nervous system is you want the, the gas pedal to work effectively with the brake pedal. Mm -hmm. So just like your car, if you put the, your, your foot on the gas and you put the foot on the brake, the car's not going to go. Mm -hmm. So what you want is that the car, that, that the gas pedal and the brake pedal are regulating well okay. and that in turn allows the body to heal properly and do better in terms of adapting to its environment so that's yeah. number one a healthy nervous system is really important to healing okay and I bet to energy as well absolutely yeah anytime your nervous system is doing well you just adapt to your envi environment more effectively okay. and it's a big reason in terms of why some people who have even tried to do things with their health may have been stopped up or may have even gotten worse on a particular healing intervention. Mm -hmm. And in our clinic, we're able to identify what would be the cause for our nervous system not to regulate properly. Okay. Yeah. And so what's number two? Number two is confusion about diet. So 
So I get a lot of people in my office who have uh, try to work out what they should be eating on their own. Mm -hmm. um, some people have done good work in terms of eliminating foods that they think are problematic, and sometimes they get better for a while and feel better for a while, but then over time what happens is they may not, that might not resolve their issue fully. Mm -hmm. So in my clinic we get clear on, one, are there any foods that are causing problems for the body? Um, and uh, we can figure out what those foods are directly. Okay. This saves a lot of time for people because sometimes people trying to just eliminate things from their diet one thing at yes. a time. It can take months, it can be really challenging, it can be really unclear. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I get people in my clinic who have really tried a good attempt at that, may have had a little bit of success, but still are not resolving in terms of still not feeling yeah. well, um, something's still off. And so through the testing procedures I use, we can figure out what is the food that might be causing problem right. for the body and just kind of get laser focused in it. Yeah, and I bet there's a lot of people that were like, I read this book and it said that I should eat like this. <laughs> Absolutely. There's all sorts of diets out there yes. and advice on what you should be doing with your food and your diet. The reality is is that everybody's diet is as unique as their fingerprint. Mm -hmm. um, so what you should be eating versus what you should not be eating, what that person who wrote, authored that book about the perfect diet, there is no perfect diet for yeah. any for everyone. Um, you really got to figure out what's the right diet for you and then you know, get in the habit of eating it. And mm -hmm. most people find that once they figure that out because of the return on their investment, so to speak, in terms of eating the right foods, yeah. um, it's really simple to make some of those dietary changes because you feel better yeah. and you're clear on it. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, so we're on to number three. Number three, oh boy, taking, we kind of just talked about this a little bit, taking uh, supplements or health advice that's not suited for your body. Okay. So you kind of alluded to it a moment ago, spending hours on the internet, Googling conditions, yes, Googling you symptoms, can find so many. trying to figure <laughs> out what is the thing that might be stopping you up in your health, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, again, you know, it, it, what worked for that author of that book that wrote that book is not, right. it worked, that diet worked for them, it's not necessarily going to work for you. Um, taking supplements that aren't suited for your body. So there's a lot of like different, you know, cleanses out there, for example, mm -hmm. um, different ways to go about restoring health. And uh, unless you know for certain that that's exactly what your body will want or work well with, then you're taking a gamble in terms of trying to figure out what might actually be helpful for your body. And sometimes mm -hmm. doing the wrong intervention, taking the wrong supplement can actually make your, system, your um, symptoms worse uh, and eventually create enough stress on your body to where things get worse in the long run. So mm -hmm. knowing the right supplement to take, knowing the right diet, um, taking health advice that's suited specific, specifically for you is really key. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember my dad, so we were very much a family of herbal remedies for everything. So mm -hmm. if I was sick, my dad would have me drink disgusting echinacea <laughs> tea. I had cod liver oil from a nasty bottle. Yeah. It was horrible. Back then it tasted like straight fish. It yeah. was disgusting. Yeah. But my father would always say, um, when you go to the you know health food store, and they give you something, he said, if you don't feel an effect, stop taking it. Yeah. If you just feel like you're just taking it to be taking it, that's a waste of your money and you don't want to be putting that in your body because your body doesn't need it. That's true. And I just remember my dad telling me that. And so anytime I feel like something isn't, you know, well, I don't take random supplements anyway, but when, when I was, you yeah. know, I would stop taking something if I realized, okay, this isn't benefiting me. Right. Right, and a lot of times, you know, in our uh, clinic, we're just backing up kind of what the already the intuition of the patient is. Yeah. Um, I have patients come in who say, I think that I'm done with X, Y, Z supplement, and I'll verify that through the testing procedures. Yeah. And a lot of times people are pretty right on. Yeah. So using your intuition as a, as a guide for that is, you know, definitely helpful, um, certainly. But getting the, the, you know, second opinion of a professional using the testing procedures can often be very yeah. helpful as Makes well. Yeah, makes good sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So. Great. What's number four? Number four is not enough time to heal. Uh -huh. So this is a big one. You know, we live in the world where, you know, it's kind of like immediate satisfaction, gratification. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to health, what a lot of times people don't really account for is that the symptoms that they are having have been with them for a long time. And sometimes all the way through, you know, even to childhood yeah. in some uh, situations. So one of the things that can be stopping you up is that you just haven't been patient enough. Giving your body enough time to heal. You have to consider if you've been dealing with something for 30 years, mm -hmm. it's not gonna resolve in a month. 
you know. Um, and what we're doing in terms of health is we're really trying to restore health from the foundational level. Yeah. When you get to the basement of the house and you make things better there, then everything above it goes better over time. Oh yeah. Uh, so you know, investing in the foundation and working out the foundational level of your health is going to pay dividends in the future mm -hmm. uh, when you, as you age and you know, as things uh, change in your environment, that kind of thing. So you really um, got to give it some time in general. Okay. In our office, we're able to figure out, you know, through some additional testing, how long it might take someone to get through a foundational building of better health for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just going into it knowing that, um, you know, in good sense, uh, health is going to take, by the time you have a symptom, by the time your body's giving you that warning. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been, the symptoms are actually uh, your body's last ditch effort to say, hey, yeah. SOS, something's going on here, and I need some help. Yeah. So, you know, giving, making sure that uh, you account for that is really important in your health and your healing journey in general. Good. Okay. Yeah. So, number five, what is number five? Number five is you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Okay. Right? So, in, in the in world or in life, we kind of go around uh, being pretty familiar with what we know right um, and sometimes what we don't know so you go to the doctor doctor says hey you've got uh, we've got a lab work back for you and you've got some high triglycerides you've got some markers on your blood work that are showing that you know your body's under stress you've got yeah. some maybe inflammation going on um, and you're you know schooled enough to know well I don't think that's a good thing to yeah. have high it triglycerides. It sounds bad I don't really know what that right. means. <laughs> right so you know your next question might be well what's the reason for me having you know my blood work being off or having high triglycerides glycerides uh -huh. and uh, your doctor might inform you a little bit about why that is and then you're probably going to go home and google it uh, <laughs> and see what you can get on the internet about it right yeah um, so you know you go from not knowing what you knowing what you, not knowing what you know then knowing what you know and but what you don't know that you don't know is that there's a reason why you're having high triglycerides right. in the you first place. Right, you got there for a reason. You got there for a reason. And so in the terms of health, what we want to understand is that uh, there's a reason why your body would have gone down that path in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so what you really want to do to be successful is get to that root cause yeah. and really understand why it is that your body would be ex displaying some sort of a symptom or have some sort of an imbalance going yeah. on. Uh, to where you would get to that point. And you know, when you don't know that you don't know something, is the best time to hire a professional. Yes. You know, somebody <laughs> that can see your blind spots kind of yeah. thing. Um, and through our process, the way we work with clients, we can uh, understand what those blind spots are. Yeah. Um, we get really to that level of detail and awareness um, based on the feedback we get through the testing. Nice. Yeah. So, what's one really great tip that people can use right now to take? better ownership of their health, take control of their health, do something that's going to give them more energy or just feel a little bit better tomorrow. Right. Well, you know, there's, gosh, there's a probably a ton of things that I could say to answer that effectively. And again, it really comes down to the person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I tend to not dole out like, you know, this piece of health advice is for everyone. Yeah. The, the point that I would really want people to take away from this conversation is that it, there is no one global piece of advice that works for everyone. Yeah. So what you really want to get clear on is what's the specific needs of your body? What are the things that you need to be doing to address the imbalances mm -hmm. in your body? And so, you know, my advice essentially is, is to get clear on that, yeah. um, to really figure out, you know, what it is that your body needs help with. You know, like if your car broke down, you wouldn't take it, or you wouldn't take it to the backyard and start working on it, most likely, right? Um, but I might, I might play around. You might with try. <laughs> 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 it, just if you didn't have all the women of yeah. networking, like extra stuff to do, plus yeah. your full-time job, then you might, yeah. Looking around, that. like I know yeah. what's going yeah. on in here. Um, but most of us, I know me certainly, would not try to right. figure that out. I would take it to a professional yeah. to get some help with that, and you know. It, we, you know, in the world of what are the most important things, if you ask somebody what's one of the most important things in, to you, health is life. your health. Yeah, you yes. like, if you don't have your health, what do you have kind right. of thing. Um, but we tend to take that for granted and yeah. we will, you know, try to guess at things, try to use, you know, Dr. Google um, for free advice and, 
um, you know, it can be a little bit maddening. So hiring yeah. a professional to help you get in and figure out what is going on with your system, why that health issue is not resolving, what do you need to do? Yeah. Um, and man, there's nothing like getting back in the driver's seat with your health. When you have that ability, I mean, most people that are sick are, feel a loss of control and a loss of power when it comes to their health. And uh, being able to get back in the driver's seat, have be empowered with knowing what you need to do to keep yourself well for your future pays dividends. It extends to your husband, your, your spouse, whoever it might be, and your kids, the rest of your family. So it's pretty good stuff, right? Beautiful. <laughs> well, take control of your health, and thank you so much, yeah. Erica, for all of that amazing advice. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having <laughs> me. Now that you've got a handle on your health, it's time to talk celebrations. Our next guest is the woman you want around when you've got a special event coming up. If you love sweets, you'll love meeting Kristen Marin, owner and chief decorator at Sugar Me Sweet, where you can get hand-decorated sugar cookies and cake pops that are almost too pretty to eat. You'll see what I'm talking about. Kristen, welcome. Thank you, Crystal. It's well, a pleasure. Yeah, I'm so excited because, of course, I'm a sugar addict. I've been trying to quit. I really have. Sugar is hard to quit. Oh it's my gosh. everywhere. And the things that you make, I mean, just, we just made this, we made a really pretty cupcake. What did you call this? It's a petal tip, uh, so normally it would be a flower, but we put some extra petals in there to uh -huh. fluff it up a little bit. So it would normally be a flower with pearls. You did it in like two seconds and it's gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been doing this? I started the company in 2013 with decorated sugar cookies only. Okay. And then I progressively added cake pops and cupcakes, and now we're also doing cakes. So we do some gluten-free, um, mostly all full sugar, full flour. Yes. Because that's what most <laughs> people are eating, despite the, the risks. Um, but the cookies were the, the staple of the company for a long time. Mm -hmm. But now we've expanded into more things, so we get to expand more, play more, learn more. Yeah. And it's really kind of given the business a life of its own. So um, do you have other people that work with you, or is this just on your own? I have an employee now. Um, she nice. found me a couple <laughs> months ago, and I think the universe provided her to me Aww. and then said, here's the business to follow. Yeah. I think that it, it knew that I was going to need help and brought me her, and she's fantastic. I love and I that. Love her. <laughs> she's like my third daughter. What's been the biggest part of doing all of this for you? Is it the fun of creating for people's events or more about something in the passion of cooking and the passion of putting all these beautiful art, art pieces <laughs> together? You know, it kind of started with the art, but now it's more about being such a part of people's celebrations. Mm -hmm. I've, I'll do a bridal shower and I'll have the wedding and then I get the baby shower and then I get the birthdays. Yeah. And it just one follows the other follows the other and I feel like I kind of become a part of their family yes. when we get to do this. And it's a lot of fun for me. So, you know, grandma calls, hey, we need Hazel's sixth birthday. And I'm, like, I'm on it, you know, yeah. and we're still doing purple and pink because they're still her favorite colors. Yes, we are. So, you know, fifth year in, we're still doing her for her two favorite colors. Yeah. So what's one of the biggest challenges? I know that this has got to be a lot because you have, I guarantee there's a party every day. <laughs> there is a party every day. <laughs> this is true. Um, I think the hardest part for me is coming up with the new ideas. If someone uh -huh. comes to me with a theme, we're doing wine and cheese for this bridal shower. We want cookies that reflect that. I ask them to send me whatever artwork or invitations or anything uh -huh. they've seen that they like and I'll work from there with their colors. It's hardest when people are either overly specific, mm -hmm. like I want two that look like this or one that looks like, those are almost impossible because just trying to put that order together right. is so taxing. Yeah. It's so time consuming. Or when people just say, oh, you know, just do your thing. I know whatever you do will be great. Then I'm under all this pressure to make something the really great <laughs> with no guidance. And so that yeah. makes it really hard. You to have <laughs> all of the imagination possible. You can think of yes. anything. Help me narrow it down just a little. Yeah, that's like when people tell me, uh, just order me whatever off the menu. I'm like, the menu is immense. Okay, well, I'll order you a pizza sandwich. Right? How do you like that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> all right, well, tell me, so talk me through making a pretty cupcake because lord knows i've tried and i don't know if i don't have the right machinery i mean you've got some interesting things going on here what does it take to make a cupcake look pretty 
Magic Touch. Mm. Actually, not even magic. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Okay. Really, there's so many tips and so many cheats anymore. It really doesn't take a lot of effort to make something really pretty. Uh -huh. We can do a simple, like the rose swirl tips people see all the rose time. Rose swirl. Oh, yeah. That's like you the can ones just, you buy at the store. Yeah. yeah. Or you can really, if you like icing, you can really pile swirl them on. Swirl it around. Yeah, that one looks more like a... Um, I remember going to Dairy Queen as a kid. That's like the Dairy the Queen tasty Freeze Twins. The tasty, yeah. <laughs> you had Tasty Freeze. You grew up in Michigan too. Or like we did with this other petal tip. Uh huh. This you can create little petals. Yeah, that was really crazy. What you did, you like twisting and it's the just cupcake keep turning while the cupcake, swirling the keep turning frosting. the cupcake, and what? then you can just kind of put little what, little what? petals in the center and just keep making them come up. And then you've got a little flower cupcake. It's so pretty. Wow. Here. Oh. You try. <laughs> OK. So well, easy. You really can't mess up icing. I'm going to try a mix of what you just did. So I'm swirling. Oh, it's not doing much. I'm swirling Squeeze yet squeezing. Oh, it's kind of florally. Ah. The best part it with the bad. icing that doesn't look bad is you can scrape it and start over at any time. Oh, that's, oh that's perfect. I don't hate it. That's perffect. <laughs> I love it. Great. So if somebody wanted to follow in your footsteps, what would be the first thing that they would have to do? The first thing they would have to do to be a master master baker cookie master decorator crafter. Yes, have the ability <laughs> to learn. I mean I so much of it was videos, yeah. people. My sister taught me how to decorate cookies originally and then I just kind of took off on my own and yeah. I found people whose styles I really liked and who I could replicate comfortably, mm -hmm. people who I like to decorate like, and then just follow them and I see stuff that I like that's different and I have put my own twist on a lot of stuff and so really just you have to have a passion for learning. Yeah. How do you find these people to follow? Are they like they're cake everywhere. boss people? <laughs> no, they're not even cake boss Instagram. people. Instagram. <laughs> there is this crazy little cookie community. I don't even want to call it little anymore, but there are cookie like in any industry there's like the queens of the cookie land yes okay and they're out there and some of them I adore and some of them their styles while I appreciate their art aren't anything that I would want to do not your bag not my yeah. bag um <laughs> I love what they do but I don't have eight hours to spend on a cookie oh yeah <laughs> it's not my not my thing um but yeah there's just this huge huge group of cookie people and cookie followers. There's yeah. even a cookie convention that they do. Oh my do. gosh. No lie. It's so you fun. You need to get me the, it's the so day. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me where They do it is. every 18 months <laughs> in Salt Lake. So the next one will be next September, Woo September of Woo 2018. And I told Devin that I would take her to that. It's, um, they bring in some of these big cookie artists and they do classes all day long for three days. And then there's a banquet, there's decorating. I know she's like, <laughs> Decorating, <laughs> open decorating and judging, and there's all kinds of competitions, and they have a big cookie competition for all of these. You can enter in any of these categories, wow. and they announce the winners at the end of the convention. It's really cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's so exciting. So all these people you know on Facebook then become IRL friends. Nice. All right, well, now i got to taste this. <laughs> Enough it's, talk. Everything's melting Enough under the talk. lights. Yes, it's melting <laughs> under the lights, and I put way too much on this one cupcake. <laughs> going to be delicious. Oh my god. Okay. Does that taste like gluten free? I'm taking this whole plate home. <laughs> you can have them. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Cupcakes are amazing. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. your amazingness. Oh, your you're amazing so welcome. And I will see you again soon. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> that is tasty. <laughs> wow. Today's lineup was amazing. I am so glad that we got to talk to these women today, but what's most important is that you were here to enjoy it with us. I want you to always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.